Welcome to Olivia's Blooms. If you are new to my channel, I'm gardening in Charlottesville, Virginia, Zone 7B. I'm a home gardener who loves growing my own cut flowers and home decor with a focus on sustainable, regenerative, and eco-friendly practices. But most importantly, I'm here to support, share with, and learn from other gardeners. So I hope you will join me in growing this amazing gardening community. Hey guys, welcome back to Olivia's Blooms. Today we are talking all about crop planning and crop planning can seem like a really boring and complex topic and it is pretty complex and involves a lot of organization but I find it really useful and helpful to do, especially if you wanna squeeze a ton of blooms out of a smaller space, which is what I'm gonna be doing this year with my business. Before we dive in, I apologize for the background noise. My dogs are having a lot of fun playing together and so you might hear a lot of growling. I, uh, you'll just have to bear with me in this home setting, but um, I am going to show you my crop plan for this year and how I am going to squeeze thousands and thousands of stems out of just about 226 square feet. I do have a little bit more than that. Um, I mentioned in my previous video, I am gonna be using some of my landscape as well, but it's harder to estimate how much square footage there actually is. So it'll be a little bit over 226, but it's not a lot of space. But I am going to be maximizing the amount of blooms I can get out of that space through some really in-depth crop planning. So I'm gonna show you visually because that's how I think um, how I'm going to be succession planting and spacing out my flowers throughout the season and my garden to get to that $5,000 sales goal. But if you don't like learning from videos, some people prefer learning from classroom settings or from reading. I learned a ton and I, I got a lot of help from a blog post on C from Sierra Flower Farm and I'll link that below. It is an awesome resource about how to do crop planning and all the different variables and things you have to think about. So I'm gonna break this essentially into two parts. And the first part is my spring crops. And those are the crops that I will be planting throughout February and early March, <clears throat> maybe even late March. And that is to have all of those flowers blooming in the springtime, so May through June. And then I'm gonna have a second set of crops that I will be planting for the warm season, my warm season flowers, my warm season annuals for July and August. And then a lot of those will take me into September and October. I might do another flush of seed starting and planting to get me through September and October. Um, but I'm not focusing too much on extending the season well past the first frost date this year. And right now, most of my focus is on spring and summer when I'm hoping to do most of my sales. Within those spring and summer sections, I will be doing successions. I will have things blooming at different times, but essentially those are the two big blocks that I'm looking for. So step one in doing my crop planning was really laying out how much garden space do I have. So here's a look at my garden layout. It's not laid out exactly like this, but this is visually easier for me to plan. This is how much space I have. I have 14 four by four raised beds in my raised bed vegetable garden. Last year I used most of those to grow food. I did dedicate a couple to flowers, but this year I'm allowing myself to use six of those 14 for dedicated flower production. I also am going to be creating three new row sections. One of those rows is going to be 15 by four. One of those rows is going to be eight and a half by four. And one of those is going to be nine by four. That one's not really a new one. I'm just extending a bed I already have that has some room in the front to create a nine by four growing space that's easy for me to plan into and plant into. And I'll take you guys outside once it's warmer and show you how I'm gonna make those. They're not made yet, the, the in-ground beds, um, but the raised beds are already set up. And so that's how I calculated my 226 square feet. 
And within each of those sections, so for each four by four bed, I calculated how many plants I can fit at different spacing. Now I will add that I used four foot beds. The, the raised beds just happened to be four by four, but I looked at a lot of other flower farmers crop planning and four feet seems to be a good amount of space in terms of width for a row to allow you to work in between and reach all sides. So that's what I went with is four feet for all of my rows. So here you can see how many plants I calculated for each growing space. And what's interesting is what you plant and how closely it can be planted is important to know. But it's also important to know how many stems you're gonna get out of that plant. So it's not just about how closely can I plant the plants. What you really wanna think of is how many stems can I get per square foot? And to give you an example, I might be able to pack tons of sunflowers or tons of stock in a four by four bed, but once I pull that stem, that stem is done. Versus if I put a snapdragon in, I might need to use nine by nine spacing, but I'll be able to pull those snapdragon stems. For me, I was cutting off of those snapdragons from May until our first frost. So a lot of bang for your buck for that nine by nine inch spacing. So you've got to think, how many stems am I going to get per square feet? If you only grow one or two crops, you know, that's easier calculation. But for me, I want to do mixed bouquets. And so I've really got to think through if I want to have a variety of things, how can I make sure I have enough stems to get to my goal of around 150 per week, but also get the most out of my space. And so that's where this planning again is really important. So I have to understand both how much space I have, what I wanna plant and how much spacing they need. So here's a look at the spacing I'm planning on using this year. You might find different spacing recommendations if you look at what different flower farmers use. Some of that is actually dependent on your climate. For example, a drier climate might you might be able to get away with some closer spacing, but a more humid climate like mine, we have to be careful about making sure there's enough air circulation so you're not getting disease spread. But I did have luck pushing my spacing last year. And again, because I have such a small space, I'm gonna push the spacing this year. I might regret it. Um, I might have to adjust next year if it doesn't work out, but I'm gonna do the smallest spacing that is recommended from the different sources that I've looked at and we'll see how that goes but um, I'm also going to be doing my sunflowers four by four not four by five I'm not sure why that typo is in there but um, this is just a look at how I'm planning out which crops are going to be planted with which spacing the next thing I did was overlay the plants I want to grow with the space I have to figure out how many of each plant I want to plant out in February and March for those spring blooms. So for example, in one of my 4x4 four four beds, I'm going to put 25 ranunculus. In another one of my 4x4 four four beds, I'm going to put 15 anemones and I'm going to use the rest of that bed for 10 snapdragons and so on. You'll notice I didn't use all of my space because I'm going to need to be planting out my warm season annuals and plants in April and May before my spring flowers have even started blooming, definitely before they finish blooming. So I need to have space for both. And then what I did was I looked at the average number of stems that I will get per plant and I used the more conservative estimate. So ranunculus usually give you three to five stems. So I estimated that I should get about three stems per ranunculus plant. I added that up and then I averaged it over the five week period that I expect these all to be blooming together. And I came out to about 192 stems per week. So that's about 118 per week from the raised bed area 
and another 64 per week for my in-ground rows. I didn't estimate how many I'm gonna be getting out for my landscape because I don't wanna count on those. Those will just be bonus stems. But I 192 should be plenty to get me to that 150 stem a week target that I wanna get so that I can sell 10 bouquets a week to reach my $5,000 sales goal. But I need a buffer just because you never know if you're gonna have crop failures or bug issues. So I wanna make sure I've got some room for things that are inevitably gonna pop up and cause me to not get as many stems as I would hope. Here's a look at what I'm gonna be planting out in April and May. You'll notice I've added my warm season crops. So zinnias, basil, celosia, I've added my 25 dahlias and this should help start to supplement late spring and early summer blooms and you can see all my space is filled up and then in June and July I'll be pulling out my spring crops that are done so as my stock blooms and as I harvest it I'll be pulling that out and replacing those with sunflowers. My ranunculus and anemones are going to need to sit for a little bit longer before I pull them and then my other blooms like my straw flower and my snapdragons should be blooming until my first frost at least they have for me in the past. I then did the same calculation. I averaged out how many stems I should get over six weeks in July and August. I came out to about 166 stems per week. So not as much of a buffer, but I should again be getting some a good amount of blooms for my landscape. So this hopefully gives you a generic overview of how crop planning works. There's a little more detail that goes into it. I have to do some successions, for example, of my stock and my sunflowers because I don't want 144 blooming in one week. I want them to be blooming that much over those five to six weeks. And this just shows you the process that I'm using. This isn't every week that I've planned out, but it's essentially the same for those 27 weeks to make sure that I have blooms every single week consistently. My next challenge is selling those blooms, but First step is making sure that I have enough to sell to reach my goal and that cooler will hopefully give me some flexibility as well. So as I have extras for some weeks here and there for flowers I can store for a little bit longer, it'll help me really reach that average number of stems over the weeks that I need to reach. So that is my plan for this year. We'll see how it goes. I would not be surprised if things don't go as planned and I end up putting things in different places or not having as many plants as I counted on, but I tried to give myself a good buffer so that even if I lose some crops here or there to unforeseen circumstances, I should be able to at least get close to that 10 bouquets a week goal. But again, this year is gonna be all about learning for me, but I still feel good knowing I've got a plan in hand and I hope you guys had as much fun planning out my garden with me as I did. And I hope this is helpful as you decide and figure out how you're gonna get the most blooms out of your space. Thanks. I have, how many do I have? But the topic today is crop planning and now I have to start over because I forgot what I was saying. Okay, <laughs> take two.